Hello everyone, back to you into today's uh, video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Well, today's video service is going to take us to around the 13th of September. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have GFS and ECM ensembles. We're into around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre for the next 40 days at the end of the video. Uh, big thank you to our good friend Dylan Holbrook for sending uh, those charts through to us. Um, so we're going to have a USA update uh, coming up for you uh, tonight. It'll be a little bit of news about the schedule for the USA update because the, the uh, recording schedule on that is going to be a uh, change. But more about that as we get to... Uh, as we get to tonight. Uh, so that'll be on the YouTube channel. They're YouTube exclusives. Uh, more about that tonight. Right, Ben. Uh, so, first thing you want to do is say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. So, I've had a donation through PayPal from Neil Smith. Thank you to Neil Smith for uh, becoming a, uh, a PayPal donor for Gaz. He's actually Neil has given, given us a few donations over the years. So, thank you so much, uh, Neil Smith, for, for your donation. It's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much, Neil, uh, for, for doing that and for the support for Gaz Webbies. If you'd like to uh, become a PayPal donor for Gaz Webbies, all you need to do is come to the Gaz Webbies uh, PayPal.me page and you can uh, pledge, donate, whatever amount of money you would like to Gaz Webber Vids and you're going to get a shout out in videos or you shout out and say thank you so much uh, for doing that. There is also uh, YouTube channel membership and also uh, Patreon as well. So yeah, it's not a problem at all. It is not a problem at all uh, if uh, if you want to uh, support Gaz Webber Vids in whatever way you want to do it. And, and it doesn't have to be financial actually. You can do it you know, by watching the videos, by sharing videos, by liking the videos, uh, by subscribing to the channel. All of these things help to support uh, Gaz Web. So thank you to each and every one of you for the support that you've always shown to me and given me over the past, what is it now, eight and a half years that we've been doing this. Uh, so so thank you each and every one of you. A special thank you to Neil Smith uh, for your donation. Thank you so much, Neil, for doing that. Right, let's have a look then. So uh, this this is how things are looking in the tropical Atlantic. So we've got four areas of interest. We've got a yellow X just here. We've got a yellow X just here. We've got Tropical Storm Nana just there. <laughs> and uh, we've got um, Omar just here. Travel depression, Omar, giving maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour with a minimum sense of pressure of 1,005 millibars. Moving eastwards at 14 miles per hour. Come down into the tropical Atlantic, so they've also got disturbance too. Uh, they're saying that the tropical wave located off the coast of West Africa is merging with another disturbance located a couple of hundred miles south of Cabo Verde Islands, which is resulting in extensive area of disorganised showers and thunderstorms. Development of this system is likely to be slow during the next couple of days while it moves west northwestwards at about 15 miles per hour. A tropical depression is more likely to form early next week over the central tropical Atlantic, where environmental conditions are forecast to be more favourable for development. It's got a 70% chance of becoming a tropical cyclone in the next five days, a high chance. There's also disturbance one. Uh, they're saying with that one, a broad area of low pressure located over the eastern tropical Atlantic, several hundred miles west-southwest Cabo Verde Islands is producing a, a small area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Gradual development of the uh, gradual development is possible early next week as the larger tropical wave located off the coast of Africa passes to the north of the system on Sunday. Has a 20% chance of cyclone limit 48 hours and a 40% chance in the next five days. Uh, so, in theory, next week we might have two more tropical storms or even hurricanes in the tropical Atlantic. Have to wait and see. We have got a tropical storm as well. We've got Nana or Nana. Not quite sure how you pronounce this. Um, tropical storm Nana or Nana or Nana. Uh, it's looking like that. So, currently, the maximum sustain is 70 miles per hour. Not that far from a hurricane. Have to, it will only have to go another five mile an hour stronger to become a hurricane. Uh, with minimum set pressure of 997 millibars and moving westwards at 15 miles per hour. If we click on uh, Nana or Nana or however you pronounce it. 
Uh, this is what uh, it's looking like. So uh, you can say it's a tropical storm as it moves into Guatemala. We'll bring copious amounts of rain to Guatemala. Uh, then a tropical depression as it exits the uh, coast of South America uh, and going to move out into the Pacific Ocean as a post-tropical depression. Uh, by tomorrow, so it's going to move quite quickly, but it is going to give a real drenching, real drenching coming up uh, for like the border of Guatemala and into Mexico as well. Uh, men will be all eyes on those other disturbance areas, of course. Central temperature is looking like this. So confirmation that we ended up uh, for August at 17.6. We covered this in a video a couple of days ago. We ended up at 17.6, an anomaly of 1.8 degrees above average. For well, September, uh, we're standing at 14.0, an anomaly of nearly one degree below average. Uh, that's provisional, though, only for two days, only for like two days of the month. So uh, that's probably going to, I mean, it's quite warm at the moment, quite a warm humid air mass today, but probably, probably going to see that easing down over the next few days. That will sort of uh, decline away over the weekend into the early part of next week. Then later next week, it'll probably take off again. It could get quite warm. So, so at the moment, we're sort of alternating air masses going, going between warmer and cooler air masses, which is very typical for September. And so I wouldn't expect it to be too far from average, like for the first week to 10 days of the month. I doubt it will be. Uh, this is how the uh, 500 millibar height knowledge road charts next week, 10 days, are looking from Penn State University with the ECMWF on the top and the GFS on the bottom. So 500 millibars is an area in the actual high pressure, low pressure, are being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red X relates high pressure blue to low pressure. So you can see that in the uh, 7 to 10 day time frame, day 10 takes around the 13th of September, we have an area of above average heights in the middle of the North Atlantic and below average heights are uh, into uh, Scandinavia. Winds are sort of going northwest, southeast, rather like that, along with the jet stream. And so it looks rather cool and unsettled, uh, really. It looks rather cool and unsettled there with the ECM as we're heading into the middle part of September. And that gets us to around the 13th. So rather cool, rather unsettled, showery northwesterly winds setting in, north to northwesterly winds setting in as we get into the, uh, in, in towards the middle part of the month. GFS is more unsettled, actually. Probably not quite as cool, though. It's more westerly. But, I mean, deep area of low pressure to the north of Scotland. That's proper sort of zonal flow setting up with the GFS heights, uh, you know, high heights to sell. Quite a strong westerly and jet stream coming in from off the Atlantic as well. So looking pretty unsettled, uh, looking pretty unsettled there uh, as we go through into the middle part of the month with both of us. But the GFS is probably the wettest and the ECM is probably the coolest of the two. GFS upper air temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies or ensembles are looking uh, like this. So the uh, red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average. We're starting off pretty warm at the moment. We're going to see the temperature sliding away as we go through the first week of September. It will get quite cool. But then as we run on into the second week of September and up to the middle part of the month, there's a bit of a warming trend through here, so it gets a little bit warmer light through the early to middle part of next week. Uh, and then a lot of scatter. So these on some members up here are, are warmer members. These are cooler members. I think probably uh, on balance, you know, uh, there's a lot of up and down going on there. So probably quite zonal with sort of warmer and uh, cooler sectors alternating with one another. Precipitation-wise, a fair amount of dry weather coming up, to be honest. So there is going to be some shower rain over the next few days, up to the start of next week. Then it goes pretty dry, though, as we go uh, through like the early to middle part of next week and then maybe more and settle around the middle of the month and into the second half of the month. Temperature anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of September could be very close to or slightly below average. Precipitation anomalies from the 3rd to the 11th of September are going to be drier than average. This is how the latest wind flow map is looking from earthnollschool.net. So low pressure in control. Low pressure is in control of the weather sitting around just the south of 
I sort of bring in this westerly flow from off the Atlantic. So, uh, yes, we dominated by low pressure at the moment. And we'll remain so really through the rest of this week and the weekend. Early next week, we might, we might early next week start to see uh, that we go back towards higher pressure. I think we will. This is how the GFS, uh, the UK Met, I should say, is looking for Sunday. So in a rather cool and showery northwesterly flow on Sunday. And then the high pressure ridges in through the early part of next week. Now, this high pressure never completely settles things down in the north. So for Scotland and Northern Ireland, it will be a little bit more showery with rather stronger west wind. For England and Wales, though, it will be mainly dry and quite warm. And as we go through to the middle of next week, you start to see high pressure pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic. Winds turning to the northwest, so it will become cooler and it will turn more showery as well, particularly in the north. Southern areas, though, probably quite a lot of dry weather down there still, even up to the middle of next week. And I think temperatures could get into the mid-20s, Celsius down in the south through the middle part of next week. It is possible. Uh, that's how the GFS is looking for sunny. So again, a rather cool, showery northwesterly wind on Sunday. And then into Monday and Tuesday, high pressure reaches in from the Atlantic. and brings quite a lot of dry weather to England and Wales. Scotland still looking rather showery, though. Wednesday, high pressure begins to pull out into the Atlantic. A cold front's pushing in from the northwest. That brings a band of cloud and um, patchy rain. But then high pressure comes back in through Thursday and into Friday, too. A lot of high pressure domination. But by Friday, low pressure rain is properly starting to dig into the north. So it begins to turn much more unsettling in the north. But for south, quite a lot of dry weather. As we go through into the weekend, still alternating, you know, uh, with low pressure and high pressure. So on Saturday, probably, let's go back to it, probably dropping a cold front down across the country, taking a band of rain. As we go through into Sunday, the ridge builds back in from off the Atlantic. It turns drier, but temperatures will probably be quite cool by then uh, under that area, area of high pressure. In the more extended range with this uh, 6Z uh, GFS rub, still a lot of anti-cyclonic influences, you'll notice, especially so down in the south. So quite a bit of dry weather from the south, even into like the uh, middle part of the month. It's not until very late on, it begins to turn more distinctly unsettled there with the uh, 6Z uh, GFS. So, so so, yeah, the, the uh, GFS, 6 edge GFS, anyway, has quite a lot of high pressure. But, you know, gather that is at odds, really, with, with like, uh, the midnight GFS run. This is the midnight GFS run. That looks a lot more unsettled around day 10. So, as ever, it's pre proving very difficult, very challenging to work out what's happening with this September. GM looks like that. Rather cool and showery northwesterly winds on Sunday through to the early part of next week. Again, we've got the high pressure region into the south, bringing a lot of dry, fine and quite warm weather with it. Always a little bit more unsettled, cooler and showery up to the north. Uh, then going into the second half next week, again, just breaking down the ridge, so the GM starting to turn things more unsettled, like the weekend of the 12th, 13th of September, probably autumnal, actually, uh, by the 13th of September, not just unsettled, but autumnal, with deep low pressure over top of the coach. That will bring them persistent uh, rain and heavy showers at times as well. Temperatures could be quite cool. And then ECM looks like that. So, uh, again, rather showery with northwesterly winds. A little bit on the cool and showery side for Sunday into uh, Monday and Tuesday. A lot of high pressure down in the south. A little bit more unsettled up in the north. Uh, this high pressure, again, could lift temperatures around mid-20 Celsius down in the south through the middle part of, uh, of next week. And then later on, the high pressure begins to pull away from us. Winds start to dive in from the northwest. It starts to turn cooler and more unsettled from the northwest with showers along the of rain. Winds ain't swinging to the north. Winds turning to the north through the weekend of the 12th and the 13th. It turns cool and showery uh, before the high pressure begins to reach back in from off the Atlantic. But that is within a much cooler air mass as winds have been driven in from the north. Look at the upper air tension. They look properly autumnal there by uh, day 10 with the ECM. But if we go back to like... Um, Go back to there, Wednesday. Let's see how the upper air, how warm the upper air temperatures look uh, there. So, uh, so whoops, that can go right. Didn't I? I should have got always set up before I started, but I didn't think of doing this, actually. So I just looked at that. So, yeah, warm. I mean, really warm with the upper air temperatures for Wednesday. Plus 10 Celsius ice firm is up to Northern Ireland and Southern Scotland. But, but like, in about, so that's like in a week's time, or just under a week's time. But in 10 days' time, look how different, how much cooler the upper air temperatures look. That's a big change, and we'll feel properly autumnal.
So, again, this is all very, very typical of September with alternating air masses, cooler and, 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 and warmer interludes, warmer, drier interludes, uh, and, and wetter and, uh, and, and drier interludes and so on. Uh, right, this how the rainfall forecast is looking from Tomecho.com based on that ECM run. So, again, lots of showers around today. Plenty of showers and some longer spells rain places too. And we keep the showery conditions coming in from the northwest over the next few days as well up to the weekend. But into next week, so I'm south of the north, it's mainly dry though uh, down in the south. Man of quite heavy rain across England and Wales in around a week's time. That's on that cold front that lowers the temperature. Then the wet weather is really in the north then uh, as we go through into like the weekend of like 12th and 13th of September. Uh, these are actions on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 13th of September. We have 29 members of the ECM ensembles with above average heights out to our west, below average heights to our north, northeast. Winds are doing something a little bit like that. So it is rather cool and it is uh, uh, mainly settled with that option. 22 are cool but much more unsettled. Beings on some measures here are cool and unsettled with a big dip in the jet stream as well uh, and a ridge pulled out into the middle of the North Atlantic. So, so the 29 just there are cool and settled. 22 there are cool and very unsettled under low pressure. I suspect it's all about timings of troughs and ridges, uh, really. In two weeks' time, uh, these reactions we got this for the 18th of September, have 11 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure over to the west of the country, and we're bringing in like an unsettled flow from off the Atlantic. Nine with high pressure to our north and low pressure to the south winds are coming in from the east. Another nine with high pressure out to the west, low pressure to the north, northeast winds are in from the northwesterly direction. Uh, nine with again high High pressure over Scandinavia, winds uh, winds in from the east with that low pressure out to the west. Uh, eight with high pressure through the country and up to the northeast as well. Jet stream is pushed north. Quite a bit of dry weather with that. And five with high pressure to our east and drawing up winds from like a southerly direction. Uh, so I mean, there's so so many options on the table. It is hard to decipher where things are going into the second half of September. It's just going to be a case of watching this space. But I suspect we'll probably continue to alternate the air masses. That's what I would suspect. Is like to have we'll alternate between or oscillate between high pressure. And low pressure and we will sort of alternate between warmer uh, drier and cooler wetter interludes in what looks like a very very classic september finally a uh, beijing climate center so these are 500 bit of our heights broken down into 10 day periods sent through by our good friend dylan uh, thank you dylan for sending this through uh, takes us from the first through to the 10th of september so uh coming 10 days with below average heights for ourselves above uh, uh, below average heights to the north above average heights for ourselves winds in from the west so it's classically westerly most unsettled in the north driest down in the south. Uh, the next 10 day period takes us from the 11th to the 20th of September with again above average heights to our south and southwest. Below average heights are up to the north. It's turning drier there and will probably be quite warm as well. Uh, the next 10 day period is from the 21st to the 30th of September with again high pressure over and slightly to the south of the country, mostly dry, particularly for southern areas. And then more settled into the first 10 days of October. This is the first, first through to the 10th of October, with lower heights coming in from the northwest, along with a cooler northwesterly wind. That you would look at those charts and think that September is going to be a very settled month, especially so for England and Wales. I don't think it will be that settled for England and Wales. I, I think there will be drier periods, as we went for in the September forecast. There will be drier periods, but there will also be unsettled weather at times through this uh, through this September. Remember, those are 10-day anomalies. So whilst the anomaly overall for 10 days might be favouring higher pressure, within those 10 days, there will be days that deviate and are more unsettled. That's what I'd suspect uh, anyway. So, so yeah, it's all quite interesting. Classic September seems to be coming up with a lot of old, old, old trim going on, a lot of chopping and changing, uh, as you always get in September. And then maybe a definitive plunge into autumn through early October. Of course, that is days 31 to 40. 40. Very, very long way out. Right, we'll be back later on with the uh, latest USA forecast. I'll have an update on that about uh, the schedule for that uh, starting from next week. So, so more about that coming up uh, later on. USA forecast will be with you this evening. Uh, for today's 10 to 14 day video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.